Hey everybody, Raziel here, coming back at you with another Smite God build for the Xbox One, or any platform for that matter. This week we are bringing to the table Hunbats, the Howler Monkey God for patch 4.2. Yes, 4.2 again. Unfortunately, 4.3 for the consoles has been pushed back to probably the week after this video is uploaded. So, we'll see that next, next week hopefully. Anyway, he fills the role of assassin for the Mayan Pantheon, and he is a crazy jumping, monkey throwing, fear inducing mobile ass jungler that puts a damper in all your plans if you happen to be too close to your teammates. This video is intended for those just starting out with Hunbats, those who need a refresher with the god, or those who, if you're lucky enough to see Hunbats before he strikes, notice he just threw something your way. No, not poo, but a monkey, and boom! He's behind you, and before you know it, you're feared into a wall, and he's jumping on your back, mauling you until you're dead and back at your fountain. We will start out with his abilities, or kit as I call them, then go over relics and item builds, and finish off with ability combos and fighting scenarios. If you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future Smite guides. Also, feel free to leave a comment below requesting any future gods, or just to say hello for the hell of it. Also, I've set up a clan on the Xbox One called Ve Victus. It is open to anyone to join, and um, there will be a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Now let's get into those abilities. Before we get started, I have to go over a little housekeeping that I have for every video. I play with a Savage layout on the Xbox One, which may look different from what you're playing with. Also, the PS4 has different buttons, and the PC and Mac have a different UI altogether. So as such, from now on I'll be calling out his abilities as 1, 2, 3, and 4, with the 1 ability all the way over to the left, and the 4 or ultimate being all the way on the right. Hopefully this clears up any possible confusion later on in the video. Now let's get it on it. You, 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 you mumble bitch. Anyway, his abilities or his kit. We we'll start off with his passive, which is used, uh, called Infused Strikes. Stumbling, but I'm gonna keep going here. Using an ability gives Hunbat's next basic attack within the next three seconds an increased critical strike chance of 30%. So that means he uses an ability. The next basic attack, which you should probably throw that down right away, has a 30 extra extra 30% chance to crit. Now that will come into play uh, when you when you're doing an item build for him, uh, somewhat depending on how you want to build him. But that's pretty good. Early on, that could that could make a big difference um, in your jungling abilities and your ability to secure a kill. His number one. <laughs> it's called Somersault. It's a leap. He flips through the air, crashing down at his target location, doing damage to all nearby enemies and slowing them down. The damage at max rank is 210, plus an additional 70% of your physical power. And it slows any of the, any of the gods for 40% for 2 seconds. That's not too bad. That that's, could be used for initiation and or chase. Well, again, I'll go over that. Uh, later on in the video, I want to go over his combos and whatnot. So that's pretty good. His two is called Overhand Smash. It's a cone, and it's his main wave slash jungle clear ability. He uh, he le kind of leaps a little bit or hops up into it, the air, smashing his staff on the ground in front of him, doing damage to all enemies with that cone. At max rank, is 295 damage, plus an additional now get this 95% of your physical power. The scaling on this god is friggin' ridiculous. That's all I gotta say. He's got some monster scaling, except his ultimate. But his ultimate is a different beast altogether. So this is gonna do a lot of damage. I mean, if you look at this, it was 210 at max rank, and now this is 295, plus another 95%. That's a lot. That's a lot. His three is called Sacred Monkey. And he throws out the monkey, or commands the monkey through the air, that pounces on enemy targets and doing damage on each pounce it does, hitting each god only once though. Uh, and pressing it again will teleport him to the next target that it hits. So this is this is his little teleport, this is like a, like a mini blink in itself. Uh, you know, you throw it at the wave, it hits you know five or six of them, or four I guess, uh, as it says down there. Four targets, 
and you hit it again and boom you're, you're behind the wave and you can clear it or get that enemy god and gank the crap out of him anyway max rank does 260 damage with an additional 70 percent of his physical power so from his one to his three just does anywhere from 210 to 295 damage i think and then uh, two of them are at 70% scaling, and his two is at 95%. I mean, that's that's pretty high amount of scaling for these abilities that have a, a fairly low cooldown compared to his ultimate. And usually the ultimates are the ones that have the, the most amount of scaling in their kit. But he's the opposite. And he's got that, he's got that passive crit bonus. You know, so each ability he throws down, you throw a, a basic attack after that, and potentially you get a crit. Boom bitches anyway moving on to his ultimate his four it's called fear no evil it's a monkey you know covering his mouth or whatever and the icon there but he throws down a totem from the ground to ward off all evil which uh, happens to be the enemy team any enemy caught within the radius is feared directly away from the totem and takes damage every quarter second so every damage uh, that ticks, it's 50 at max rank, plus 15% of his physical power. Now that see, that seems like, oh, that's a crap freaking alt. The scaling on that is ridiculous. It's 15 compared to the 70, 95, 70 in his other abilities. Well, you would think that. Uh, max rank, it, it, the lifetime of the totem is 2 seconds. So, so at the very very least when you first put a point into it it's at one second so you're gonna get four points of damage you know so it's at ma it's 30 it's 120 plus 15 percent whatever your physical power is okay but the thing is is their fear they can't do anything and they're running away you 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 fear them into like a wall or something it allows you or your enemy your teammates to hit with additional abilities so if you combo these which I'll go over later I don't want to give too much away because it I have a schedule here you know <laughs> uh, you can do a lot of damage fairly quickly with this ultimate up so that's his kit in a nutshell it's pretty self-explanatory uh, the somersaults his one and his three allow him to move around uh, uh, f somewhat freely his two does a crap ton of damage uh, with the scaling alone and his his ultimate is just annoying as hell but also kind of fun I mean this god is fun to play uh, I you know bust him out now and then just for SNGs to to just mess with the other uh, team and stuff and sometimes I just steamroll sometimes I get shut down a little bit there are ways to counter him but you know it's just all in fun right so next we're gonna actually go over his items and his relics so let's segue into that right about now. Alright, so now we're going to go over his, his item build and his relics. Uh, primarily for Conquest. Uh, I will kind of just mention uh, what I would change uh, for Clash or Joust <coughs> or anything else except Assault. Assault's a different beast altogether. It's a very specific game mode. You can't go back to the fountain, so things would be different there. That game mode, I leave it for you guys to, to decide how you want to play it, because it's it's different. Anyway, these items and relics are situational. I say this every video as well. Depending on your team comp and the enemy team composition, you may switch things up in your relics, in your item builds. Uh, but for the most part, this these items that I'm going to go over will will get you where you need to be, at least as you're learning the god and his nuances and everything else. Additionally, items may change and patches after this, so, you know, it, it's up for grabs there. I mean, all the, vid all the videos I did in Season 3, a good chunk of them probably aren't as relevant now as they were before. I mean, the combos and the abilities and everything are okay, but the item builds may not be as pertinent. Uh, for one, Frenzy is no longer a relic. It's, uh, it's a ritual now, so. Anyway, Getting too far off tangent, we're going to go straight into his relics here. We're going to start off, depending on what who you're going against, I mean, a good safe bet is usually Purification Beads because they have an Ares, they have a Neja, a Scylla, you know, someone, that, I mean, you, you're going to be jungling, you're going to be bouncing between lanes 
more likely than not, you're gonna need purification beads or sunder. One of those two. You want to do the damage, you go sunder. You want purification beads, you get purification beads. If you're ballsy enough, which I'm gonna be ballsy in this build, I want to go sunder first and then probably purification beads. If you're not that afraid of being CC'd from an Ares, EME, or anything like that, uh, but you have a Neath or a Vulcan or even a Scylla, uh, go Aegis instead of the Purification. Uh, the Sunder, though, you know, using the item fires a bolt, travels 70 units, and stopping on the first god, dealing 40 true damage plus 14 damage per god level, and increases the damage taken by 15% at the, the base of free rank. Now, if you go into the $500, 500 gold version dollar, it's additional 30% instead of 15. And the cooldown is 30 seconds less. Is it 30? Yes, 30 seconds less. So, that's pretty good. You know, we'll, we'll buy it for SNGs because we have all this money right now. And the same with the, I already bought the, the new and improved beads there. So, going into starter items. He is a jungler, so you're going to want Bumba's Mask. Now, in Season 4, I've seen <coughs> a lot of junglers and even potentially mid laners going with a two-starter item start. Now, what that means is they're going to start off with Bumba's Mask. Uh, and I'll go over the, the reason here for the passive here. I mean, you get 50 health and mana. Not too bad right off the bat. Plus, your basic attacks deal 15 true damage and your abilities 15% more damage versus jungle camps you're jungling so that's, that's you're gonna be doing that a lot killing the monsters in the camps heals you for 15% of the monsters health restores 25 mana and gives you additional gold so I mean that's why you want to last hit it you should be last hitting it hopefully your teammate doesn't steal the last hits so you get that health and gold and everything else because you won't be farming as much as someone who's in lane now they go also with the blue stone because this it gives you physical power, more mana, and an MP5, which is good because he'll be using abilities a lot, especially early game, to clear those camps. And enemies hit by your abilities take an additional 30 physical damage over two seconds, so 15 damage per second, and it'll help you clear as well. And that leaves you with maybe enough to get a potion or two. Uh, what is that? Eight. 800 and 800 I think so yeah let's start off with that and then after that you're gonna go into I went the wrong way you're gonna go into warrior tabi or tabby I always say tabby because it gives you the most physical power and for, for the for the boots and when I went over previously with his scaling at 70 95 70 that's gonna do a lot of damage early game it's going to help you guys out. So Warrior Tabby Bananas. for the win. After that, ooh, uh, it's a tough one. Heartseeker has made a resurgence this season. I'm going to skip it, though. And I'm going to go... Where the hell is it? I forget what tree. There it is. Hydras are meant. Because it's going to give you 40 physical power, more cooldown, and uh, for... Eight seconds after using an ability, your next basic attack will deal an additional 30 damage. It also grants 2.5 mana MP5 per 10% of your missing mana. So you're missing 20% you get 5 MP5. You know, it's just, it's just a scaling kind of thing. But more importantly, you do an ability, and then for 8 seconds, which is a friggin' long time, you get an additional 30% damage. Now, if you remember, his passive also grants an extra 30% critical chance after using an ability. So, if bo the 30% the, the damage is going to proc no matter what. That's just, just guaranteed. Now, the crit has the potential to, to proc as well. So, you, you get both of them proccing, you could potentially do a lot of damage right after an ability. Just by smacking him with his banana staff there innuendo not intended at all there so Hydra's Lament is why I would pick pick this up next after that we're gonna go Jotun's because more cooldown it gives you penetration 
and also gives you more power and mana. And it's just it's just a good all around um, uh, item because it gives you that cooldown, which you're gonna need. Let's see what we're at for cooldown right now. We're at 30. You know that's not bad. We're not capped. We probably won't get to get to 40 here. 30 is not bad. Free to cycle through those abilities and get those crit and bonus damage from Hydler Ment and his passive. After that, you could go one of two things. I'd probably go Deathbringer because it gives you 50 physical power and increases his, his crit like crazy. You could also potentially go um, into Wind Demon just because it's a good item. You know, it increases your attack speed and movement speed by 20%. But we're going to go into Deathbringer because we're going to want that physical power and we're going to want that additional crit uh, increase there. So it's just going to just gonna allow his passive to proc more often than not. And then after that, well, it's up for grabs really. But I would say this, I mean usually his core items are two or three items. But with the implementation of his two starter items... I'd say this entire row right here is essentially his <laughs> his core items. Now, once you sell these two, you can go into uh, any number of things. You can go into lifesteal. You can go for Aussie to give you more penetration. I'd probably go into, at the very least, um, if we're, if you're gonna go lifesteal into uh, Blood Forge because it has 75 physical power. If you want to forego any lifesteal because you're just that ballsy. I like to use lifesteal to sustain me uh, throughout the match. You can go into Crit or or Titan's Bane. Where, is, where the hell did Titan's Bane go? There it is. 30 physical power, but it gives you penetration. So, you know, what I would, I think, Blood Forge for that scaling, craziness, and and then Wind Demon. I think that's what I would finish off with. May or may not work. Uh, maybe you go Fatalis instead. Um, depending on what you're going against. Kin size, if they got a lot of tanky people. You know, it's 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 all situational. I think this build would, would keep the crit going, keep your ability to proc crits a lot better, gives you decent penetration, and also gives you uh, lifesteal and more physical power. So your passive uh, and the Hydra's Lament and the, the, the scaling of this god is just going to do it well. Now, leave a comment below if, if you think the last two items are... Or stupid or if you think oh I didn't think of that just let me know some feedback I'd love to hear it we can you know spitball some ideas and everything else now if you're going other than um, conquest like if you are starting out in joust per se or clash or something like that I would probably go bluestone now in arena I wouldn't use bluestone I don't usually don't use starter items but the bluestone in like a joust or a clash is would be beneficial probably you could forego it all together but it'll give you a little bit of mp5 and then a little bit of extra damage for the clear early game and it could also secure some um, kills uh, if the 30 damage you know does it if they get away from you so that's that uh, relics or anything else maybe if you want to split push you go with the frenzied uh, ritual I mean not relic uh, other than that, the only other one I probably would buy is the teleport to player one. Uh, if you had to back and then go uh, back up to the front line if you guys are pushing the Phoenix or something. Uh, anyway, so let's move now into his fighting scenarios. Alright, so we're going to go over his, his combos, his little fight, fighting scenarios, whatever. And the order in which you want to rank up his his kit. So we're gonna come over here to our favorite friends and our helpers here, Odin Squared. Now I said earlier he's a he's a fun guard. Let me just hit these guys a couple times. I mean, with this kit right now he's pretty he hit, he's his hit pretty fast. If you had Fatalis instead of um, Wind Demon or something, 
Uh, you'd probably be doing it quicker, but I think this works because it, look at the amount of crits that are happening. So, he's fast, he's fun, he's a freaking monkey. I mean, how could you not have fun uh, playing this god? Now, <clears throat> Own Square here is going to help us out. We're going to go over his ability, and actually, we're going to. The leap will allow us to jump over the wall, so let's do that. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to hit him. I did. Yeah, see this little slow down by his feet. Oh! Um, the next ability I'll show the hit this passive potentially procs. So the leap has some good distance on it. Well, it's already back up. So, and, uh, so I can go from this Odin here over to that Odin. Like so, boom, hit, and get that crit. It's kind of hard because I got two crit items anyhow, but the procs are there, I promise. This two is the cone, and that's a pretty good cone. If you can say this Odin on the left was the the back of the minion wave, and this item on the right Odin on the right was the front of the minion wave, you could you could get some distance there. Now obviously they're gonna be a lot closer. But you can hit boom. Oh jeez, that was a big old crit. You see that it was over a grand. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's level one, but still. So that's the cone. It's a pretty good cone, and you can see already my freaking ability is already up. That's ridiculous. Now let's go over to uh, the minions here, so you can see the his history ability in action, and, and we had perfect timing here because they're gonna be coming back. Uh, hopefully, where are you guys? Come on. There they are. Okay. So I'm gonna throw out the three, and then I'm gonna hit it again to. Uh, teleport so and boom I'm right here and then clear the way boom game over so that's how you do it you get hit it's like Thor's um, teleport we have to hit it twice um, and you'll be over there I feel like I'm gonna sneeze sorry if I do uh, it's a handy little uh, ability it's good for initiation it's good for chase uh, and it's good for helping wave clear uh, if you got blue stone and you pop that down there, it's going to hit four minions at the very least. And that will help you with the wave clear, like I just said. Now his ultimate, here's the totem. Now you have a little bit of a distance you can throw it down. You can throw it down right on top of you. Now the thing with the totem, depending on where you put it, is where they're going to run. So, you, so if I put it behind him like this, he's going to run right at me. If I put it this way, he's going to run towards the wall. I put it, you know, in this location he's going to run towards the, the the doorway there. If I put it right on him, I don't think I can, but uh, who knows which way he'll go. So, the combo for this is pretty much, if you have ultimate and you're feeling confident, you can lead with that. Now, if you have an Odin on your team and he puts the, the, uh, the rings down they don't have a phantom or any leaping ability... Uh, you throw that down right in the middle, and it'll do damage. Um, you're going against, uh, you, you're going to gank in the mid lane, and their their mage is out of position, and they're kind of close to a wall like this. You throw it down, and you do do a combo on them. So, it's a it's a good initiation. It's also a good uh, peel ability. You guys are getting chased. Oh, oh crap, you know, I can't see. I'm going to throw it down. They're going to run away from us while we continue to run this way and get the hell out of dodge. And, you know, I enjoy using it because it pisses people off. Straight up. I'll use it against a squishy mage. They're like half health or something. I'll, I'll monkey blink in or leap in and throw it down and just hit them with my two... Well, throw it down, auto attack. Hit him with my two, auto attack. You know, you just kind of, you want to auto attack in between so you can get those procs from the Hydra's Lament and his passive and then do the next thing. Even when you're wave clearing, you want to do an ability basic, an ability basic. And you should get the uh, the minion camp or the wave clear uh, that way. So we're going to we're gonna throw down here um, and do it. So... Say, I mean, you could just walk up, right? Put the totem down here. You're gonna see him going. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I dropped this down. I'll hit him, hit him. Oh, I forgot to. And then hit him there, and then jump on him and hit him there. So, 
I know I forgot to do the basic attack after I ulted, but that's what you want to do. You want to you want to do that, hit him, hit him, hit him. So I mean, as you see, that 1,000 proc there. I mean, you're not gonna always get a thousand proc. I mean, he's level one Odin, but that 1,000 proc is my passive procking with the Hydra's lament. If I don't do that, the passive not proccing doesn't get up past a thousand in damage. So that shows you by basic attacking in between his abilities will do that much more damage. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You're going to use his three to initiate or chase. You're going to use his one to initiate or chase. And you're going to use is to to just hit hard and his ultimate to d disrupt and allow for you and your your teammates to do a lot of damage. Now I know I used and I, I should have mentioned this in the item build. Sunder could be replaced by a blink. I know he has two kind of leaps or you know mobility uh, uh, item, um, uh, mobility abilities uh, in his kit, uh, but you could use a blink as well if you want to do that instead of using one of his abilities if you need to feel like you need to escape more often. Uh, so, yeah, I hope this helped. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below and any any reason, you know, if you found this helpful, if you found an item build uh, a little bit better. Oops, I forgot to mention what order. I'll do that real quick before I finish my outro here. You're going to want to rank his two first because the scaling on that is so friggin' ridiculous. Then after that, Probably his three to help with the wave clear, and his one whenever you want. Now, if you feel his one's going to do more damage, then go with that. But his three and his, his two, then three is what I usually um, rank up, while throwing a point in his ability every time it pops up. So for for reference, uh, for a summary here, two, three, one, four, whenever possible. That's the order you want to rank these babies up. Anyway, leave a comment below. Leave a thumbs up or hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more future what the hell sentence structure is this anyway smite god guides coming in the future pretty much uh is what i'm trying to say um i hope you guys enjoy it and i will see you guys in the next one peace ah.